Hey, Nicole here with Own Your Mom Co. Today I'm bringing you a very special behind the booth interview with Sam from NW Rose Events based out of the Northwest. She has had her business for two years now and we talk a little bit of the ins and outs, how she got started, uh, as well as the reason why I interviewed her, which was her brand photo shoot that she did early on this year. I loved the output of it, so I thought it would be a really great opportunity for her to share kind of the why behind brand photo shoots and even how she did it, kind of her strategy, um, how she gathered the right vendors. So I hope it's helpful. I hope it's a really great insight into kind of the, um, the depths that you can go into really solidifying your brand and how you represent yourself to the world. So without further ado, here is the interview with Sam. You guys, I am so excited to have Sam from NW Rose today chatting with us. Hi, how are you? Hi, I am awesome. So, so honored and excited to be here with you and to finally meet you face to face after Hi. messaging on Instagram for so long. I know, <laughs> right? It's been, yeah, it's been a, quite a while that we've been like chatting on Instagram and watching your, your stuff. It's just been so cool. And so I'm so grateful, first of all that you took time out of your day because, um, you work full time, right? I do. I do. So yeah. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. So where, like, where are you in the country right now? I am in Hillsborough, Oregon. It's about 20 miles outside of Portland. Okay. Um, but I do work fully remotely from home, but full time throughout the week. So then, um, right now my business is fully like weekends and side gig, um, for the time being. And, eventually hoping that it'll be full time, but right now it's just this on the side. Yeah. So what do you do for work? What I you- am on a customer service team for a uh, translation company. So oh. I have, you know, different accounts um, that I manage for the company. So I'm the point of contact and their lead customer service representative, basically for the company. So that experience is definitely helpful. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you feel like you've learned a lot and like applied a lot in the photo booth industry? Yeah, definitely. I think it kind of give and take on both industries. Like I will have experience from working on my own business that I can take into working with clients for my day job. And then same thing, the experience that I work for the customer service team, I'm like, oh, that's a really great idea. I need to implement that in my own thing. Oh, I so love it's kind that. of Uh, really beneficial on both sides of things, I think. That is so cool. Okay. So let's go back because we kind of (laughs) jump in. Um, Could you just give us a little bit of history kind of on who you are and when you started your business, all of that? Yeah. So again, my name is Sam. I am the owner, one woman show behind all things Northwest Rose events. Um, Like I said, we're located in Hillsborough, Oregon, which is about 20 miles outside of Portland. Um, But I basically service all of Oregon, depending on where the event is and everything like that. Um, But we started the business in mid 2021. So I actually graduated with my bachelor's of science degree. um, I think it was like the 13th of June. And then by the next week, I had my LLC form for my business. And I was (laughs) trying to learn everything and get everything going. Um, And so yeah, almost two years now, um, since we formed the LLC, but I didn't actually get my first event until closer to like November of 2021. So it took me a bit to get acquainted with the equipment and really feel comfortable even, you know, getting out there and being able to market what I had. Cause I know a lot of business owners are like, Oh, well, before you even have the equipment, just get out there and start marketing all this kind of stuff. Um, But because I was so new to the industry and just the whole concept of owning a business and everything, I was like, I'm just going to make sure I'm comfortable <laughs> before I'm out here that saying like, I'm the best thing. So um, yeah, I actually did a wedding expo before I even booked my first event. <laughs> what? So, yeah, so it was about, uh, so I got my equipment in about July of 2021. I did um, just like a free event in the park. I just set up my photo booth and had people come by and use How it in cool. August just kind of called it my launch party event but family came and we were just like okay anybody who wants to there's a farmer's market going on so come on by and use the booth um and then in October I had a wedding expo and I literally only had one marble backdrop and then the one booth and I barely had anything else I'm just like here I am going for (laughs) it yeah 
Um, and so, yeah, it was really a challenge for me, but also I think a really good growing opportunity for me to just be like, okay, here's what other vendors are doing. Um, and just meeting those other vendors, which I'll talk about again later, but I think connecting with other people is just such an important aspect of owning a business, especially in the industry. So, um, I, you know, I was just doing everything I could without having the actual like physical experience at events with the photo booths. Um, and it worked out for me. Like most of my clients um, are wedding clients and that's who yeah. I adore and who I love to work with the most. And so I think if I hadn't done the expo, I may not have gotten the leads that really helped me be successful the following year. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a long story short, how it all got started. Um, so yeah, Amazing. coming up on two years here in June and yeah, just really loving it. Well, first of all, congratulations on two years almost. That's amazing. Thank you. So I want to ask, like, why photo booths? Like, where mm-hmm. that? Because you, like, that's. I think that's so cool. Like, you graduate and you're like, this is it. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> so, like, yeah. where was that seed planted then? Sure. Um, so I have always been interested in weddings and in the event industry, and okay. so. Um, as I was gearing towards graduation, it was also my whole last year was online because of COVID. Yeah. And so I was thinking like, how am I going to get into the event industries when, especially in my area, events were not happening. And so I just kept being like, oh, I think this is what I want to do. But also it's just like feeling kind of lost and not really knowing that whole last year of school, really what things would look like by the time I graduated. Um, And I actually was listening to a wedding planners podcast. Um, It's called the union podcast. I'll give them a plug, but um, they were talking about PBS co and they brought up, you know, like business in a box and the marketing materials that came with it and all this kind of stuff with the photo booth. And my only really experience with photo booths in the past, which I think a lot of people um, kind of think about is like a photo booth in a mall or at the zoo or something where you go into the little enclosed box and then that's it. So I think this was about January or February of 2021 where I heard about this and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds really intriguing. And I kept looking into the company and I kept hearing, you know, people's stories and testimonies about working with them and starting up their businesses. And I just kind of clung on to the idea, I guess. I was just like, yep, that's it. Like, (laughs) that's what I'm going to do. And I just, you know, kind of led into it. Like, I may want to be a wedding planner one day or like day of coordination. So this will be my foot in the door, you know, to the event industry and to especially those weddings. Um, But then, you know, the sooner I got to or closer I got to graduation, the more I was like, okay, I need to know more about the photo booth industry. And what I really loved about Photo Booth Supply Co. and the Salsa Booth um, was that it was different than anything that I was seeing. In my area, especially, there was a lot of those like old school photo booth styles. And I was like, okay, this is different. This seems like to stand out. It's more modern. It seems like something more like my like demographic would like be geared toward and what I personally would be more interested in. Um, And so, yeah, so it just kind of started from like sparked from that idea from hearing about it on the podcast. And then the more I got into it, the more excited I got about it. And then obviously just jumped right in after I graduated. Yeah. So how has, like, have you seen the photo booth landscape, like where you're at change since you've got the booth? Like, have you, because it sounds like you were the only one to have a salsa in your area. Has that changed? since you started. oh yeah <laughs> oh yes um I think there was maybe one other like really big uh, local photo booth company who had the salsa but then um like I think we've talked about before I have an upcoming uh, wedding expo in May and I think there's gonna be maybe four or five other photo booth companies there including myself and I think four of the five have salsa booths <laughs> yeah. so it's definitely getting a lot more popular and so Um, that's something too, I was kind of getting nervous about, like, you know, we're all kind of selling the same product. So I need to really hone in on my branding and my business and what can set me apart from those other ones. Cause obviously we're all using the same software and we have the same booth, but then maybe the pricing or the actual like add-ons or other features that we offer are different, um, or things like that. So that's really, um, kind of also what sparked my interest to be like, oh, I need to really get my branding like down how I want it and really make it feel and look how I want it to kind of 
express what I'm going for with my business. Yeah. And that is why I brought you on today. So thanks for mentioning that. But I, before we get into branding, I wanted mm-hmm. to talk to you about your services and kind yeah. of an overview of like what you actually provide and what you don't provide and kind of the direction that your business is going. Sure. So I like to describe us as Oregon's digital photo booth experience to elevate your events. So what that that. means to me is really I'm trying to get away from the kind of, um, I don't know, like like I was saying before, like the enclosed booth experience or maybe like the props on a stick or something that you maybe would DIY. I'm really trying to offer an experience, not just the actual booth itself. So other than the equipment, the backdrops, anything like that, the biggest thing that I want to have is, you know, making those memories, but like in a more classy, sophisticated kind of way that maybe you wouldn't automatically think of with a photo booth. Um, So that's something that I've really tried to gear my branding toward. Um, And like I said, we are completely digital. So that means I don't do printing at this time. And I also don't offer props unless uh, clients specifically ask for it. And when I do, like I have an event coming up next week, that's a corporate event. um, And they said, oh, we had a prop um, booth in the past. And we thought it really enhanced our experience. I was like, all right. So I reached out to a lunch party and I was like, okay, we're going to do some custom props for you. Like no extra charge. Like my really thing is like, I am going to just do like really curated experiences Um, and really curated to your theme. So you're not going to see with my events, like random animal hats or anything like that. When it comes to the props, like I pulled um, a phrase off their website for the company that they use a lot in their branding. And I'm going to make two props for that. And then I'm going to let them keep them. They can use it in the future if they want to. Um, But really, you know, that experience really personalized aspect and not only, you know, the entertainment of the actual booth being there, but then just, you know, them thinking throughout the whole process of like, oh, wow, this is really personalized and curated to us um, as a couple or as a business or anything like that. So that's really what we're aiming for. I love that. I love that so much. That's so great. Have you, have you encountered any clients like maybe going a different direction because they're digital or do you feel like they get it and they like run with it? I feel like most people get it and run with it. But of course, there's always going to be people who have different priorities or who maybe when they think of a photo booth, they want that tangible like photo strip in their hand. Um, So that's just something that I am okay with at this point. If someone's like, oh, well, we actually really want prints. That's not something that, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, I should add prints Mm -hmm. now because they want it. It's something where I'm like, okay, well, I have some great local photo booth companies I can refer you to um, who I know print. Um, And that way, I just feel like, you know, everyone's getting what they want. And then I'm not trying to alter my brand at all, just because one person wanted something I don't offer, if that makes sense. I love that. And I think that speaks to like confidence in your company and your vision too, like where it doesn't make you feel insecure and like, oh my gosh, I have to keep this client. I have to get prints right now. Like you're standing true to your vision and your brand. And so I think that's amazing. So kudos to you for for doing that. Um, so I would love to talk about too, like, cause, um, we're in our one moment, please podcast. We're talking about add-ons and, um, mm-hmm. and kind of increasing your bottom line in that way. And I know you've just gotten flower walls, but you've had flower walls in the past, right? Or did you just get them now? I haven't, I just got them. I've had, um, some, uh, other vendors I've worked with who had flower walls or shimmer walls, but this is the yeah. first time I've actually owned them and then, you know, been setting them up myself and everything like that, which I'm super excited about. Did you get it for this expo? I did. I had it in mind. Um, I got it in the Rose Morning uh, Black Friday sale. Of course, I feel like a lot of owners do. So they're like, go, go, go. Listen, it's like the only way to do it. Like, I don't know how other yeah. people afford it. Like, <laughs> amazing exactly yeah so I was like just really wanting them and I thought it would go with you know my branding and my aesthetic and everything that I was wanting for the business and um you I bought them in November and then they were expected to deliver sometime in April and I knew I was doing the wedding expo in May so I was like that's perfect um yeah and I got some more like a greenery wall and an all white flower like rose ball um, which I thought, you know, just be more versatile for different types of events, but especially for those weddings where 
you know, it could be more personal or whatever to their touches on the photo booth itself and the customizations that we do. But then, you know, just a very standout, beautiful backdrop to, um, to add to it. So um, the expo and those wedding clients were definitely in mind when I, when I was. Yeah. Those well, and I, I'm just wondering too, like, do you know if those other salsa booth owners that are going to be there, do they also have flower walls or is this going to be what kind of separates you? As far as I know, they don't. And I've been, you know, just chatting just kind of like we have on Instagram and everything with them. Mm -hmm. And that's something um, that we've all talked about, like, oh, you're going to be at the expo too? Like, cool. We'll like actually meet in person type of thing. So I really, um, I don't know. I just really love the atmosphere of that and kind of the mindset of community over competition. And I think Mm -hmm. we all have different aspects that offer different things, even though we use the same photo booth. Um, So I'm really excited that we've kind of got off on that that foot and just that front of like being very cordial and very nice and referring to each other when someone else is looking for something that maybe we don't have. So um, at this point, I don't think they do, but I also think it's just really awesome. You know, the kind of community we've generated just from, just from that. That's amazing. So yeah. So going into branding, cause I know we're like a little short on time and I want to make yeah. sure we talk about this topic. <laughs> um, I fell in love. You recently did a brand shoot a couple months ago. Has it been a couple mm-hmm. months? Could have been just last week and it feels like a month ago, but <laughs> it was actually mid January. So okay. Uh... It was a while ago. Okay, good. Um, but I absolutely loved how that came out and I feel like it just elevated your brand so much. And I would love for you to kind of discuss, first of all, like how did you come up even with the idea of like, okay, I need to do this brand shoot. And then also this is the things that I want to get out of it. Yeah. Talk Thank about you that. so much for saying that. I, yeah, I just had so much fun doing it and the photographer is someone I've worked through or worked with multiple times in the past. So it was, you know, really comfortable for us to work together. Um, she actually shot my engagement shoot and my wedding too last oh, year. Um, I so love that. yeah, it was just, already had a relationship with her but it was just really fun to be like in a different space in a different um type of photo shoot type environment for that um but to answer your question about eight months ago or so um I was looking through my Instagram feed and I wasn't really liking how it looked like if someone discovered us like tagged in someone else's post or something the first thing that they're gonna see you know is your whole page and I just wasn't really liking how how it looked it didn't look cohesive to me there wasn't really like a common theme. And I noticed that with other local photo booth um, too, maybe you're like, Oh, obviously you're going to post a picture from each event, but then, you know, kind of looks scattered and kind of, I don't know, unorganized type of thing, which like we talked about, doesn't really fit with that kind of feel and elevated look that I was going for. Um, And it just kind of clicked with me. I was like, Oh, why am I not posting multiple like types of content for one event. So like for some reason I had it in my head. I could only post one po- picture from each event and that was it. And so I actually started this pattern in my Instagram feed. Um, that was one picture of the tap to start screen. The next would be the captures from the photo booth. And the next would just be focused on the backdrop. And they kind of switched off that pattern. And so now my feed is a lot more cohesive and it carries on that pattern. So you'll see like, in a nice like diagonal line you'll see all the tap to start screens and you'll I see all the that. things like that and I just love how it tied more into like my website design and just that more curated feel um and like we talked about like the marketing materials that are um, sent to you when you purchase with uh, PBS Co I found super helpful when I was getting started so I wanted more of that but more personalized to me and my business yeah so that was kind of what sparked it. I was like, I want more content in between these times when I have the event so I can either supplement when I don't have an event going on that week, or I can tie it in. Sometimes I would use, oh, I didn't get a shot of, you know, a tap start screen, but I can use this or whatever. So yeah. um, that's really what I wanted, just like kind of getting that more, more content and more curated content that fit with our brand. Yeah. And so I was you know, researching, like, what's the best way to go about a brand shoot. And the most important thing that I found is just planning it out. I didn't want to book a space, book a photographer, get my hair and makeup done, which I don't think is necessary by any means, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but I didn't want to do all of that only to have two hours, three hours in the space and then get there and be like, uh, 
I guess we can do this now. So yeah. um, part of what I really did to plan it out is I made like a mood board on Canva. So I just went in and wrote out like, here are my brand colors, here are the fonts and the logos. Um, and then from there, I like searched the internet, I searched Pinterest, I searched and just found like inspiration shots, basically. Um, and I sent that to my photographer. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm going for. Here's the color scheme. Here's like some post shots I want to do. I'm getting like the confetti cannon so we can do a shot like this and balloons that match our branding colors so we can do this. Um, and I think if I hadn't done that, it would have been kind of messy once we got into the space. Yeah. Um, Cause even with it planned out, it's like, okay, we only have two hours to get all these shots. Obviously I was setting up the photo booths too next to each other in the space. So that took time and taking them down and cleaning up and everything. So I really wanted to utilize the time that we had to the, you know, the utmost capacity that we could. And so really like the planning it out, I think it was the most important part aside from actually gathering all of the vendors that I was working with. Um, and then, you know, just kind of thinking in my head, what do I post the most in my feed and how do I get that in a, you know, genuine looking like natural looking way. So, you know, shots of just the booths by themselves, shots of me by the booth, shots of setting up, shots of, um, you know, up close to the live gallery and all these cool features that maybe wouldn't be featured as much if I wasn't getting them taken, um, you know, because everything's going on during the event. Maybe you don't get that yeah. shot that you want. So, yeah. That's so cool. So did you kind of work with your photographer to come up with the shot list or did you provide her and say, hey, these are the shots that I want? Yeah, we had a met for coffee before and we we're like, OK, let's think about it. Let's talk through what we want. And she would give me some ideas. But then most of it was just like crowdsourcing, like Internet searching and finding those inspiration photos that I think would match with what I wanted. That's awesome. And so did you guys do a trade or did you hire the photographer? Like how did the how did it work with the vendors? Sure. So um, since I had worked with her in the past, she did give me like a friend and family discount. But other than that, I did pay for the photographer. Um, I paid for the rental photography studio space. And then I also paid for getting my makeup done. So um, definitely an expense that I had to make sure that, you know, it was in our budget for the time and yeah. was able to afford for the business at the time. Um, Cause you know, I was kind of like, Oh, well, I don't have to get my hair and makeup done, but for professional photos, I know it always helps, you know, make sure you're not washed out and all these kind of things. So yeah. if you like love doing your makeup and everything like that, you could definitely cut out, you know, a couple hundred dollars, not getting your hair and makeup done or even not hire a, uh, a photographer or a studio and just do it out of your house. Like if you have a space like this, where your backdrops fit in the space, your photo booth fits in the, uh, fits in the space, you could set up a tripod in your phone, even make sure you have nice lighting and you could get the same effect, I think. So um, I think it depends on you as a business and what, you know, you're available to do at the time. Um, but you think, you know, just planning it out and getting the shots that you want. I don't think it really matters at the end of the day how you get those shots I think yeah. you know just being able to do so I think is really beneficial for the for the business and the branding I love that so how long do you think you can like stretch out <laughs> <laughs> your branding photos well how many do you have maybe like how many do you have to work with uh -huh. I have I think a couple hundred <laughs> Amazing. but you're like ready to go and use yeah it's and awesome Something that was really awesome about this photographer too, like when she did my wedding, she gave us our gallery. And I think there was like a thousand photos in it, like wow. so many photos where it's fun to go through and see them all. And months later now I'm like, oh, I didn't even notice that photo from before. Right. Um, but there's like, there's at least a hundred of them. And there's like a mix of headshots and just the booth versus me and the booth versus more of like me working on my phone or my computer type styled yeah. um, pictures. So yeah, I feel like I can stretch it out a lot, especially because I'm not posting them like back to back consecutively. Right. I'm mostly using them like on my website and then here and there on my feed. So I I feel like I mostly use it on my stories too. So it's not even remaining on my feed at this time yeah. until I post something with it. So I feel like I can push it out. Like, I feel like at least to the end of this year, I'll have at least plenty a year. of content. I'm like, yeah, for <laughs> sure. A year, a year's worth. So is this something you're going to be like, okay, every year I'm going to have a budget of like a new branding shoot? I don't know about every year, but I definitely yeah. think, especially because I just updated my logo and stuff like that, like featuring that 
um, or just even taking some time myself to set aside time and space and money to do it myself. Even I feel yeah. like the more like content I can generate for what I want to see on my feed, the better it is for people who come across it. Cause yeah. um, like we were saying, I think you touched on it earlier, like add ons, like we do a video guest book option. So we did get some shots of like me talking to the booth on a microphone yeah. and like having the microphone set up. And those are just helpful for, you know, a visual aspect um, it's for the clients or the potential leads that I have coming across my content, because otherwise it might be like, I'm not really sure what a video guest book is, but then if they can see someone, you know, at least pretending to use, the, yeah. <laughs> use it in the picture, then they can get a better idea of what that might look like at their event. Exactly. And I don't, I don't think we kind of, I want to really hone on this idea of like, really um, the value of a branding shoot is Mm -hmm. putting yourself and the, who you are and as you represent the business out there, because even like I'm watching your Instagram, watching your stories and it's you, it's your face, it's you interacting. And that bridge is such a big gap that I think a lot of photo boothers are missing. I think they're missing that personal aspect, especially with Instagram. It is such a relationship app and mm -hmm. um, that's how you kind of build clients and that's how you build trust. So your clients are able to come to your Instagram, your website, they see you, they know you're the owner, and then you can automatically, like, without even knowing you, you can build trust. You're like, oh yeah, that's the owner. Or oh, you, when you think of NW Rose, like you think of you. And so I, I just think it's so valuable, even if you can't do like a full on branding shoot, at least figure out a way to get some really, really great headshots or photos with you at the booth and um mm -hmm. have you ever done styled shoots I haven't that's something that I've definitely wanted to do and yeah. you know I always like try to get in communications with local um, vendors especially wedding planners and coordinators and I think that would be an amazing idea especially if you're just getting started to you know connect with them and say hey like I have this photo booth uh, you know how much can I contribute to the photo shoot as a whole is there anything needed that I can contribute but otherwise like this might be an awesome aspect because wedding clients like really love having a photo booth at their event so it would add a lot of value and I think absolutely that would be such a great idea just to not only get content for yourself but also meet other vendors in the industry in your area make those connections and also get the content so that you can use later absolutely I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. And now I'm realizing I'm like, I've meant to make a video about styled shoots because it really helps like the whole networking within the wedding industry in and of itself is like so essential. And yeah. some of the um, preferred vendors that I work with, they've had styled shoots at their events. And so they're interesting because sometimes they're, you have to pay to be a part of a styled shoot. And then, mm -hmm. um, sometimes not. And so I don't know what, like, I guess because I was a preferred vendor, I didn't have to pay. And so I was able to show up with my booth. And then in return, you get um, incredible high quality photos of your booth with like a couple, even though it's like a fake couple, but no one's not going to know that. right? Yeah. <laughs> so you develop relationships, you get these really great photos. And I think that's probably one of the best, easiest ways to either get free professional quality, high quality photos um, or at the very minimum, like a really great way to network and connect with people in the industry. And, um, I mean, it helps, it benefits really everybody because, um, you know, the venue gets, gets to show off to their brides and grooms, like the full experience of what they can have at their venue. And it really kind of makes them elevated in, in the city and state, wherever they're at. So it's such a win-win. And so I think, either doing a brand shoot or like being a part of a styled shoot and getting yourself out there that way to kind of get curated high quality photos is like essential. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's really great. I've loved, mm -hmm. loved what you've been doing and I loved um, how you're representing yourself in the Instagram community. And I just think you're awesome and you're so helpful. And so it's just been great. Oh, Thank you so much. I, I feel the same way about you. I am always just like so impressed with what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Write that down. Or uh, listening to yours and Kate's podcast, like all the time, I'm always just gathering so much valuable information from you and watching what you do. And I just 
I really appreciate you also putting yourself out there in that way because I think it's really beneficial not only to your clients and your potential leads, but also to all of us in the industry. So thank you for that. Yeah. So you're so, you're so sweet. Um, I mean, we all like learn from each other, but like that's how we grow. And so I'm so thankful, like for people like you who are willing to share their knowledge and, um, you know, this is such a a topic that I have, we don't really talk about. So I think it's really cool, a cool aspect to show like, Hey, this is something that you can do to really elevate your brand and your presence. Um, so I would love to now discuss, um, maybe like your success and any tips that you may have for somebody maybe who's watching, who's thinking about starting the photo booth business or kind of just getting started. And maybe this is like all overwhelming. So any (laughs) tips on kind of any tips or any feedback, it doesn't even have to be branding specific, but Mm -hmm. uh, just photo booth tips for newbies. Do you have any? Sure. Yeah, I guess just from my experience too, I saw a huge jump in the number of of events that I did from my start of events in November of 2021 to the end of 2022. So like I said, it took me a while to just like jump in there and get started because I really wanted to have a confidence and a feel for my equipment and know what I was talking about when I was, um, you know, marketing us. So, um, I didn't get the first events until November. And I think I only had like five total events in all of 2021. Um, but then 2022, I think I had like 27, closer to 30 and it's just me. So a lot of it, especially working full time is like, okay, what can I do after hours, after I'm done with work or on the weekends when I'm not at an event. So a lot of it has been like time management, but then the other huge aspect that we've touched on a couple of times is just that mindset of community over competition and making connections with other people. So whether that be with like the people on your Instagram or other social medias who you're connecting with, who could be just, you know, members of the public could be potential leads, could just be other owners. I think making some kind of human connection and showing up and being consistent is a huge marker of success and growth. And like we're talking about, there's always more to learn. There's always more to grow as you experience, you know, during events, you're going to learn so much. Um, I know, especially uh, my first wedding, I was like, I'm so excited and nervous. And I had like set up while all like 300 of their guests were in the space. So I was like, really <laughs> nervous about it. But every single event I go to, I end up like in my in my car on my phone, like writing notes like, oh, next time I want to try this or instead of X, I'll try Y or, you know, anything like that. We're just constantly figuring out ways to learn and to grow and to research and to just find the best ways for you as a business owner um, and what works for you. Because um, I feel like a lot of people get a little like confused, like, oh, you're a photo booth company without props. But then once they actually see the output of it, um, most people, you know, don't even blink an eye at it, don't even think twice about it. And so, um, you know, just establishing your brand, what you stand for, what you're looking for in the experience and then the output of whatever you do, um, connecting with people along the way and just learning and growing, I think is the advice that I would give. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you have anything else that you want to share? Um, um, I don't know. I, <laughs> Where can people find you? Nicole and Kate's podcast is very helpful. <laughs> Where can people find you? What's your Instagram? What's your website? How can they yeah. like, check out all these branding photos? Sure. So everything is just going to be at NW Rose events. Um, I, pick that name kind of thinking I would potentially do some like coordinating stuff in the future. So it's a bit broad, but also we're in the city of roses in Portland and Pacific Northwest. So that's kind of where that came from, but everything will be NW Rose events, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, and then same thing for our website, just nwroseevents.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time today and we'll chat later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in on the conversation today. If you like this, please give it the thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave a comment down below, subscribe, all of the YouTube things. And I hope you guys follow along. We're at Own Your Moment Co. I share all things photo booth resource related, uh, tips and tricks, everything that you can kind of imagine, I try and cover there. So uh, don't forget to follow Sam too. Her information's below. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.